Hi folks, this is Tom, your frugal prepper. Um, I'm having to do this from my cell phone again. My pink camera is just not working well. This thing is always eating batteries, which, which and it doesn't last hardly any time at all with rechargeables. But now the front doesn't open and close for the automatic shutter thing right. Just, I'm having all kinds of issues with it. I think I'm going to have to... That's actually my wife's camera. That's why it's pink. But I'm probably going to have to get a better camera for my videos. But anyway, today I'm going to be treating a pota what I believe is a potassium and magnesium deficiency on this pepper plant. Now, the history of this pepper plant is I got it on clearance at Aldi's. Um, and it was half dead. They hadn't watered it. Leaves were falling off. It was in pretty sad shape. But I got it for like $2. Um, and it's actually three little pepper plants that were planted together in, in the same pot. Um, but it's been a huge producer as it, and it's already produced a bunch then after i transplanted it it kind of quit producing but when i started the mitt lighter weekly feed it just started blossoming and producing fruit again um but there was no peppers on this three days ago and there's you can see the size of that pepper and just every day there's more and more peppers yesterday i counted 27 of them starting and there's just more blooms opening up all over on it and just pepper after pepper after pepper um, if you look, you know, down here, um, I mean, there's got to be 50 of them on there today. You know, it just, this is going to be a high producing plant. I'm going to save the seeds from this plant. It is a sweet banana pepper plant and it's, it's a very sweet and large yellow, uh, banana pepper. And it's like really is actually sweet. Now here's something interesting. Is that a bug? Oh no, that's where a blossom has fallen off on the leaf. Okay, thought I saw a bug. Um, but it's just been an excellent plant, so I'm going to save the seeds from this and do more of these plants next year um, because I like the peppers and it's a good producer. However, it's suffering um, from what I think, first of all, is a potassium deficiency because we have, here's a leaf I've removed, kind of as an example. We have these little black spots and tears in between the veins on the leaves. Um, I'll see if I can find a little better specimen. Um, is this leaf right here? You can see that tear in between the vein structure. Um, that indicates a potassium deficiency, but the yellowish cover color of the leaves are, would more indicate a magnesium deficiency. So I'm going to actually treat for both of those. Um, now this happened a while ago, and I kind of panicked. I ripped the plant out, transplanted it thought it was blight however it was not blight um, it was a deficiency because when I did another dose of weekly feed the leaves started looking better and now they're I'm getting more leaves looking like this again and it's a couple days before my next weekly feed which tells me that it's not getting enough in between the feedings of, of something uh, I am using 12 12 12 fertilizer for my mix so maybe it's not getting quite enough potassium from that um, but anyway, I'm going to give it some, you know, a supplemental treatment and uh, give it a couple weeks and see what it does. Now, one of the things that I've learned from doing some reading and, and from Jim and, and LDS is that deficiencies normally show up on the older leaves. So you're looking, if you see the problems in the older, more uh, mature leaves, but you don't see the problems on the brand new baby young leaves, it's probably a deficiency issue where normally if it's a blight or a disease you're going to see it attacking all the different types of leaves equally now i mean this is on some of the younger leaves but the worst ones and the ones that have fallen off are definitely the older ones so um what i'm going to show you is the uh, chemicals that i bought to treat this okay so the first thing that i bought here and I got this at my True Point Cooperative, which is used to be called Landmark. Um, it's the place where like farmers take all their grain and stuff to cash it in at the end of the year. Well, they have a retail store where you can go pay for the bag. And so you got to tell them bags. Because when I first went in, I said, I need uh, potash. And they were like, okay, how much do you want? And I said, one. And they said, oh, you want one ton? There's no one bag. So they're used to selling in... Let me sit down here. They're used to selling in huge quantities. But they do sell them by the bag as well. Um, 
So this is a 40 pound bag. It's like 10 bucks. Um, and then for the magnesium, of course, I'm just going to use good old magnesium sulfate, Epsom salt. Um, I've been wanting to buy a big bucket of this. I haven't yet, so I went and got another four pound bag at Walgreens. This was like five dollars. While I was at the place, I went ahead and picked up some lime, um, and I'm going to uh, probably mix that into my weekly feed. I may do another video on that. So the thing is, this is 40 pounds of potash. I'm going to need like a, a half or like one tablespoon, a half an ounce to drink that plant. So this is probably enough potash to last me the rest of my life. Um, but that's okay. Buy it once. I got some five gallon buckets that I'm going to put it in to store it long term. And I'll write on there with the Sharpie marker exactly what it is. Kind of like LDS Prepper does it. You know, if you look at He's got his all of his different buckets labeled for the nitrogen and stuff. So as I get stuff, I'm going to kind of follow what he's doing, I think, with the buckets. Keeps it dry, sealed up, and it's good forever. Um, so I'll go ahead and stop this for now. I'm going to put my uh, potassium and my lime in my buckets. And then I'll go over and we'll do the actual treatment on the plants. Okay, folks. The... Uh sun has gotten really bright out here so I'm having a hard time seeing the screen on the phone right now but I'm going to try to uh, make this as good as possible hopefully another cloud will move over the sun here soon so just FYI 40 pounds of potash will not fit in one five gallon bucket <laughs> so I filled up one I put the rest in this one and I'll store the other one um, but then, my, no, I did not mix Epsom salt and potash together. I just put sat this in the bucket to carry it over here. These are just some Dollar Tree plastic spoons that I decided I'm just going to save them for gardening use and fertilizers and stuff like that. And um, that will keep Mrs. Frugal Prepper happy because I will not be using her nice kitchen spoons. And here I have the half tablespoon and the whole tablespoon. So... I am going to do the half tablespoon of Epsom salt and a full tablespoon of the potassium um, because we want a, now let me think about this, we want a quarter ounce of Epsom salt which is roughly the half tablespoon because there's two tablespoons to an ounce and then we want a half ounce of potassium and that's per foot um, so I'm just going to say that that plant I just want to do that one plant that's showing the deficiency, so that's going to be a one foot area. So it's just pretty simple. We just go ahead and get a nice level uh, half tablespoon of Epsom salts. So we get a nice level half, ta half tablespoon of Epsom salt, and I'm just going to take it and sprinkle it around the plant here. Try to just get it all over here as good as I can okay then we're gonna take the one tablespoon of potash and do pretty much the same exact thing just sprinkle it all around the plant simple enough and now we'll just water that in real good okay so Basically, we're just going to take and water this in. I'm going to try to get it down by the dirt as much as I can. And I'll just kind of water it until this has dissolved. The Epsom salt's already dissolved. The uh, potash is getting close to dissolving. And then we'll keep an eye on this guy and see what it looks like. Thanks, this is Tom, your frugal prepper. Any questions, comments? Please subscribe. I will put a link to the Midlighter Gardening uh, Facebook group below. And um, also, if you look on my channel, you will see that uh, LDS Prepper is one of my featured channels. And if you want to try the Midlighter Gardening Method, I would highly recommend going to that Facebook group um, and checking out LDS Prepper's videos. Thanks.